What's going on YouTube? So today uh, we're starting a different project here, I guess. Uh, I'm gonna start working on the turbo truck, with a, which I haven't really revealed yet on the channel. And I'm gonna do that in a couple minutes here. But since basically now that the cab is out of the garage, um, it's back at the shop and on the frame, I can start pulling the motor on that now that I have a little bit more space and hopefully get that running within the next month or so. So here's my turd burglar of a truck. Uh, this was the truck that I've always dreamed of having back in high school. Actually bought it two years ago to this date. Um, and I've put like 500 miles on it probably. All right, so right now I'm basically working on getting the motor back out. Um, the story behind the truck is it melted a piston, uh, leaned out and it melted the furthermost piston back there on the uh, passenger side. Uh, I got most of it stripped down, just got the coolant lines pulled off, uh, most of the coolant drained. Didn't remember that these trucks kind of drain like crap, so I made a huge mess, but that's all right. Uh, working on getting the battery out right now, that should be pretty quick. All right, so now that the battery's out, I can pull this intercooler piping out. Uh, as you can see, it's one piece, uh, I welded it together, so it's kind of a trick to get it out. Kind of have to mangle it. That's why the battery's got to get removed. All right, see, just like that. So it's a little bit of a mess right now, but this is kind of the custom kit that I built. So all these headers here, they're uh, stainless steel headers out of like a late 90s Camaro uh, LS swap turbo kit. So you can buy the headers as a T4 flange on there with the wastegate right there, or the wastegate flange. And then I basically chopped it uh, up towards where the headers meet at the collector. And I kind of built my own kit with my own uh, crossover, which is over here. This was so that it would clear the uh, front drive shaft. And then the intercooler piping, I just bought a basic piping kit, chopped it up. And then this was actually my first attempt at TIG welding. As you can see, it's not super amazing. And I even ground down some spots because I wasn't really happy with it. But it doesn't leak, it holds pressure. And I got a, the uh, blow off valve, I think it's 51 millimeter blow off valve made by Tile. I got that bung welded on there, uh, IAT sensor, intake air temp, and then that is a card style mass airflow sensor out of like a CTSV. And then I also have a, where's that? Over here is the uh, the three bar map sensor out of the CTSV as well. And this just kind of mounts to the firewall back here. And then this is a ECU master. Uh, flex fuel sensor so I am running the truck on E85 and then along with that I have some Bosch uh, modified 1000 cc injectors and as you can see this is not a cathedral port intake for the gen 3 6 liters this is actually a 6.2 truck intake with a Corvette throttle body on it so yes I did have to buy the X-Link adapter that'll work with the uh, the newer pin style. And then I was also running an AEM uh, wideband along with their boost controller and uh, monitor. And then I've got some Taylor wires, which those are garbage. Those have completely burned up. Uh, I think that's why I was having a misfire and probably leaned out. And then I've got a Mishimoto baffled catch can uh, tile wastegate 
And then this is my rat's nest of a harness here. Uh, I have to sort through it and I'll kind of go over it in a little bit, but this will work in my 1500 with a 4L80 and a six liter. So this also has the electric fans wired into it along with the new style map and mass airflow sensors as well as the intake air temp sensor and all that. And then last but not least, we have the Mishimoto intercooler uh, mounts on the front of the truck there behind the grill. Didn't have to cut the grill for anything like that. Uh, that is an on three turbo, uh, 76 millimeter. I can't remember the exhaust ratio at the moment. I think it's in 0.96. 0.91 I can't I can't remember honestly uh, it's been so long since I bought it and then this is a so I got rid of the overflow tank or the factory overflow and I bought a Dodge Dakota uh, radiator fill here with the cap and then that's just a cheap Amazon a really small overflow tank so basically that tank mounted right here on the core support where the air box used to be and then I have just a the turbo sits right about here and I have a 90 with a filter on it which I need to get a bigger filter because I think that filter is way too small but there is the dryer for the air conditioning uh, I modified it to come out a little bit further so that the downpipe would have more clearance um, these cooling lines I had to extend I kind of built my own T here and then it plums it back into the radiator. But this was pretty much to avoid hitting the downpipe. Um, I have my oil feed in return for the turbo. The return goes right down there into the front of the oil pan. And then the feed loops around back towards where the factory oil cooler would be on the six liter trucks. And then right here you can see this is the boost controller and then over there is a holly fuel pressure regulator that has a boost reference bung in it so that it can adjust for boost down here behind the bumper um, as you can see there's slits in the bumper so it does get airflow but these are mishimoto fans on a true cool uh, 40k trans cooler and then I have dash six AN lines that run from that cooler all the way back to the trans. So as for the transmission, um, obviously it's a 4L80. I would not put a 4L60 in a turbo truck. Just my experience. Um, I'm sure those guys out there that can build it capable enough for it, but I decided to just do a 4L80. Uh, it's got a billet input and output shaft. The output shaft is splined for the NP243 or 246 uh, transfer case because this truck has the push buttons and so I wanted to keep the push button uh, shift from high low and uh, or from four high four low and uh, two wheel drive. So I don't know if that transfer case is going to last. We're going to see. Um, I know it's a lighter duty transfer case and I had ran a manual shift 261 in it before but I'd have to hop underneath the truck to switch it and then I would always have the uh, four-wheel drive light on so I was trying to avoid as many lights as possible but the trans is also it's got better clutches in it I think they're alto reds and it's got a 3600 stall uh, circle D torque converter bolted to a circle D billet flex plate as well as I think other than that it's just got a shift kit in it and then a couple things done to the drum but supposedly it's good to make about I don't know a thousand to twelve hundred horsepower um, now given I need to do a I, well, I want to do a manual valve body or a reverse manual valve body with a ratchet shifter in the uh, center console um, I've heard a lot of things where the trans is a lot happier with a manual valve body over a just figuring itself out pretty much um, and the reason for that is because you're either locked in at li different line pressures and you're not like slipping the converter or anything like that trying to find which gear to be in so it's going to be a lot healthier and it's going to last a lot longer all right so it's getting a little chilly out there 
Um, but I'm going to give a basic rundown on the motor real quick as well. I'm probably going to pull it tonight and I'll give a little bit better of a rundown when I start taking it apart and I'll show you guys the, uh, the damage. But basically it's a Gen 3 block with Gen 4 rods, uh, Gen 4 pistons, Gen 4 crank. So basically Gen 4 internals, uh, the reason for this is because they can hold more horsepower than the, uh, the Gen 3 stuff. If you, if you saw a side-by-side -side, uh, comparison between a Gen 3 rod and a Gen 4 rod, you would definitely see that the 4 is a lot thicker. Um, it can take a lot more abuse. But other than that, um, it has new rings in it. It's got a phenolic uh, lower ring uh, prone to less cracking. Obviously, I screwed it up somehow, but uh, the whole bottom end was rebuilt. Has new bearings in it, uh, ARP rod bolts. Uh, it's got a high volume melling oil pump. Um, I think that's about it for the bottom end. Uh, the top end, I have Corvette 832. Do they're 832 or 823? I can't remember. I gotta look at the casting. But uh, I think they're 823 uh, heads. So the square port, they have the sodium filled titanium valves. Um, supposed to be a lot stronger. And I can actually vouch for that, or vouch for that because I ran a 5.3 with those heads, mistakenly, and the bore size is a lot smaller on a 5.3. So I ended up smacking the cylinder walls with the valves, and I had the heads redone, I had everything checked, and they said that the valves were still perfect. So those are some strong valves if they could tear up a cylinder wall and not bend themselves. But on top of the valves, I have a trunnion upgrade kit on the rockers. Um, I did some hardened uh, BTR push rods. Um, I have I have a different set of melling lifters. I can't remember what they are though, but they have self oilers in them. I know they're a little bit better than stock, but nothing too crazy. And then of course I have that 6.2 truck intake along with the Corvette throttle body. And then in that intake, I also have those uh, FIC injectors, which they're technically just modified Bosch, but they're FIC specs, 